Okay, and for the second part of our presentation, we're going to go to James. Take it away, James. My name is James. Uh, I have been on Left Out since 2015. Um, other people talked about what their solving specialties are. Mine are that I am good at coding and spreadsheets and that I can wake up very early on Saturday morning. Those are my two strengths. Um, I'm going to talk about collaboration tools for hunting. Why do you want to uh, do remote collaboration? Uh, in my opinion, the best part of the hunt is working with your teammates. I really like my teammates and I really like solving them. But it can be frustrating to duplicate work or to solve something that's already been solved. You get to see more of the hunt if you solve more puzzles. And so if you spend time solving things that are already been solved, that doesn't let you solve more puzzles. What I'm going to talk about here is uh, systems for um, who's talking about who is for communicating who's working on what uh, to talk about each puzzle and to save context for handing off puzzles between solvers. Uh, I will also talk a little bit about what we do on Left Out and general collaboration strategies. Okay, a quick disclaimer. Uh, I work for Google, uh, as do many of my fellow Left Out team members. I'm going to recommend a bunch of Google stuff, but I actually think it's, uh, it's good stuff. And I wouldn't recommend it if it wasn't. Okay, so what do we do on Left Out? We use a program called Czar. Uh, we use it when we're all sitting in the same room and it makes it more fun to solve puzzles. We think Czar will be even more useful than it usually is when we're all remote and spread out. Czar does a lot of things, uh, or it simplifies a lot of things. Uh, it makes it easy to get to the puzzles. There are links inside Czar that just take you right to puzzles. To share information about what's going on in puzzles, like what I've already done, or this puzzle is needed for this meta, which puzzles go with which metas, things like that. It shows who is or has been working on puzzles. So if you say, boy, I can't understand this at all, but I saw, I see Todd was working on this, you can grab Todd and he can tell you what was going on with the puzzle. I think the most important thing on this slide is you do not need site scraping and Slack channels and auto creation of sheets. You can get do a lot and have a lot of fun with a much smaller system. Uh, okay, so why do you want to track who is working on each puzzle? So you can see what's being worked on. Uh, it's nice to know what is active and what's sitting uh, un inactive. Uh, if you want to work with specific solvers, like there's a lot of times where I'll say, oh, I want to do a puzzle with, with Matt or, or Todd or Linda, you can just hop on the puzzle they're working on, which is very nice. You can, like I said before, you can get information about uh, from people who've already worked on the puzzle. And just quickly, there are lots of ways you can track collaboration, like having one big video chat where everyone's talking to each other or a spreadsheet, where people say what they're working on, or you can have channels in various systems, or you can have your own server like we do. I'm gonna get into that in just a second. Okay, video chat. Why would you want to have video chat? Because it's incredibly useful to talk to your teammates. We're all video chatting all the time now and it is exhausting, but the uh, video chatting is the closest we have to simulating actually being in a classroom. So it's, it's very nice. And you can show people what you're working on, which is great also. Uh, in terms of recommendations, this uh, slide has a lot of information. Uh, you can take a look at it when it's up later. Uh, kind of the, the nuggets, in my opinion, are Zoom is great if you have a poor connection, like if you're at your parents' house and their internet is crappy, like me. Uh, Discord is very popular uh, with gamers. I don't know anything about it, except that it's popular with gamers. Uh, and Google Meet is actually very nice, uh, especially if no one on your team has a Zoom subscription, uh, which they, someone probably does. There's also, uh, I have some general tips that I want to share just to make sure I cover them, which are, you should definitely install the app, whatever you're using. Um, you should use headphones, please. Or eight months into this, you should know you should be using headphones. And you should turn off your video if you're not using it, uh, because it will save bandwidth. All right, text chat. Text chat is also super important. Text chat uh, lets you share text information, uh, like URLs. I feel like during the hunt, I'm constantly cutting and pasting Wikipedia pages into chats to say, like, I think this puzzle is about this. 
You can also have the text of what you're working on. If you're in the middle of typing something, you can show it. Uh, you can put puzzle notes in, which are super helpful. And you can also put uh, information that will help people solve later. Like if you say, hey, I think this puzzle is about Richard Nixon's dog. And even if you say it as a joke, people can come back later and say, hey, wait a minute, that was right. We can use that to solve the puzzle, which is very helpful. Our recommendation, we talked about this a little bit inside left out, use whatever you're most comfortable with. You should use a chat system if you have more than uh, more than five people on your team, you probably want to have a chat system of some kind. Slack has nice integration with Google Drive. Discord has tons of bots. Again, what the gamers tell me. But you should use whatever you know and whatever you're most comfortable with. OK, file sharing. Uh, why would you want to share files? It's uh, because if you're using spreadsheets, for example, uh, which we will get to later, it's useful to share them with other people. It's also useful to dump all kinds of data into a shared folder, uh, like photos or code snippets. You're going to accumulate tons of data during the hunt. It's very useful to have one place to put it all. My general recommendation is Drive. It's super easy. That's what we use. Uh, people like Rockbox also, it's very nice. Um, whatever you use, sort out the permissions ahead of time and make sure that everything is open to your team because that can be a real headache and it can be a real source of frustration uh, if you're not on the address for your, uh, for your shared folder. Okay, where to solve? Basically, you're gonna use a uh, Google Sheet for everything in my experience. Why do you wanna use Google Sheet? Uh, it's because it has so many measures. It has version control, which is really great. If you make a mistake, you can just undo or you can go back to the earlier state of the puzzle, which is super handy. You can get a ton of people looking at a puzzle at once, uh, which is really great, and making progress together. There are many, many functions built into Google Sheets, including indexing, which is very, very useful. Uh, Weiwa showed that in his puzzle, um, but you can use lots of uh, Sheets functions. Some tricks that I like, uh, one sheet per puzzle, you can copy paste and copy paste special in data where possible to reduce transcription errors. You should make new columns when you're trying something. And uh, if you wanna do something big, like sort all the data, you should tell everyone else who's also in the sheet or otherwise they will be very surprised and frustrated. And you can also make new named sheets to try out your really bad ideas. Uh, just be aware that if you're working in a sheet, it is not the puzzle. And so you may want to go back to the puzzle if you're stuck and say, oh, wow, like there were these little stars and moons and comet on the page that didn't get captured in the puzzle. Maybe that was useful, uh, which is a uh, good, good technique. Uh, solving physical puzzles. Um, often HQ will give you objects. We are guessing they are not going to do that this year, but we don't know. But you will often have to make something in the real world, like knit something or build something out of paper and tape. I think you'll probably have the best solving experience if one pod of solvers makes the object and then shows it over video chat or with uh, the pictures. But the point of the hunt is to have fun. So if it looks like a fun thing to knit, you can have everybody on your team knit it. It's also very useful to put labeled photos into the chat uh, so everyone can see what you're working on. Uh, I'm seeing some product knitting. Yes, knitting is very common. There's often a knitting puzzle. All right, crosswords. There are probably going to be a lot of crossword puzzles in the hunt. They're kind of a standard puzzle. Uh, why would you put your crossword puzzle into a sheet? All the same reasons you'd want a sheet in the first place. Reversion control, so a lot of people can work on it at the same time. So you can have access to the uh, spreadsheet functions if it turns out to be more complicated than a regular spreadsheet. This is one where a lot of times people will take a uh, crossword puzzle, especially, especially if it's complicated to transcribe offline. So if you're going to print it out, just tell the other solvers you're printing it out and do it on paper. Uh, some tips that I use are um, making columns with 21 is super useful because it means things will be square. You can also uh, use comments or clue numberings like one across so that you can overwrite and not lose the clue number. 
Uh, there are some image manipulation techniques for putting uh, grids into spreadsheets that are beyond the scope of this, but you can see some links about how to do that. All right, programming. Uh, why would you do programming? Uh, another common type of uh, MIT Puzzle Hunt puzzle is a programming puzzle where it's very obvious that you will have to do some coding. There are also programming, there are also puzzles that are not explicitly programming puzzles where you realize this would be faster if I wrote a computer program, like a 3D slithering solver. There are lots of different ways to do coding uh, and to do collaborative coding. Uh, I've listed a bunch of them, but I will tell you that I am a professional programmer and I don't really love any of these. Honestly, the things I do most often are um, work with other coders. Each we agree on a function we will write and then we paste them all together. We put them in the chat and send them. Or uh, I just look over Dan's shoulder while he programs and then he just solves the puzzle. You can also do a lot of programming in Sheets and I'm embarrassed at how much programming I've done in Sheets. All right, that was a lot of information but I'm happy to take any questions you might have. I have no guarantees about my answers.